Hey folks, Matt Bullock here, technical marketing engineer with the Cisco ISR Integrated Services Routers to talk about the new ISR 4000 series. We're gonna cover just the facts here, just what you need to know with the new portfolio from Cisco. Now the ISRs, the Integrated Services Routers, are the latest, the ISR 4000s are the latest in a long heritage of Cisco branch routers going all the way back to the 2500 series in 1993, the first Cisco platform dedicated for branch environments. Uh, we followed that up with the 2600 series, which introduced integrated security, integrated firewall capabilities, and modularity, modular interface modules uh, in a, a branch platform. Uh, after that came the integrated services routers, which also integrated voice and uh, along with security capabilities in the branch router. Uh, the ISRG2 followed that up by adding general compute, server virtualization capabilities, and much, much more performance in, uh, in the integrated services routers. Uh, we followed that up with the ISR 4000 series, the first of which, the ISR 4451, we actually introduced in 2013, sort of a teaser for the rest of the portfolio, which we're introducing now in 2014, filling it out with the rest of the 4000 family. Now what's new and unique, what's different about the new ISR 4000? The first uh, thing that's gonna be really notable for most users is that these are really pay-as-you-grow platforms. We've designed these to really give you the opportunity to just pay for the capacity that you need at any point in time in your branch. Uh, we do that with a couple of different features. The first is the ability to add in applications and add in services remotely on the platform and that comes both in the in the native internal services services capabilities a, a built-in virtualization inside of the box as well as the ability to add in virtual machines through server blades with the cisco ucse series uh, the other way that we uh, implement pay as you grow is really what we call performance-based licensing uh, really which means that you're only paying for the performance that you need out of your branch router as your branch grows as you have more bandwidth needs in your branch you basically turn on a performance-based license and dramatically increase either doubling or tripling the performance of your branch device uh, of course we do have just like we introduced with the new 4451 a completely separate control plane and data plane in the ISR 4000 family. Uh, and that services aware data plane is really unique in the entire industry, especially in branch environments, that we've really designed these platforms from the ground up to really be layer seven forwarding boxes. They're really not your typical layer three uh, or layer four type of router that we're accustomed to. These are really branch platforms more than they're uh, a traditional router. Uh, and of course that virtualized services framework and uh, UCSE series built in gives you a couple of different options for running your traditional virtual machines and your, uh, app, your appliance applications inside of the branch, either through an internal hypervisor inside of the ISR 4000 or through the additional UCSE series server modules that fit into the ISRs. Uh, and of course, all of this on a platform that's designed to price and cost you about the same as the current ISR G2 generation and be about four to 10 times faster. So you're getting a much, much more capable, much more powerful platform for about the same price. We always try to do that with the ISR family. Uh, one other thing that we're doing here is dramatically simplifying the portfolio in terms of deciding which platform fits into which need. Now, currently with the ISR G2s, we have about 11 platforms that fit an entirely, an entire range of performance and capabilities and slot module counts uh, across the board. Well, now with the ISR 4000s, we're only gonna have five platforms that fill all of those needs. And what we've done here is we've given you an array of interface densities across the portfolio. You don't have to go all the way up to the highest end platform, the 4451. If you do want to do uh, voice aggregation or T1 aggregation, you can do that at a lower end uh, within the portfolio. And if you really just need ethernet in, ethernet out, there's really no need to buy a 2RU or a 3RU platform the way that you do with uh, your traditional ISRs. You can do uh, all of that perfectly fine in a 1RU platform with the 4431, for example. Uh, also with performance-based licensing, we're actually getting 10 different performance levels, even though we only have five different hardware platforms. Uh, so the way that you look at this is the 4451 is basically a one gigabits per second platform out of the gate uh, with the entry level uh, platform. And then if you add a performance license onto that, it basically doubles your performance up to two gigabits per second of total system forwarding. And that's with services. So these all have a very, very flat performance curve 
as you add services, we really maintain that performance level. And that's really what we can do with our separate data plane, our dedicated data plane uh, with multiple CPU cores, all sharing the load of the, those services and those features. And really what we're doing is we're just turning on and off some of those data plane CPU cores, depending on what performance level you have licensed. Uh, so we're able to hit all the way from 50 megabits per second on the 4321 up to two gigabits per second uh, cleanly with only five platforms and 10 different performance levels in there. Now, of course, I did mention that we do have service virtualization inside of the ISR 4000, basically built in to the boxes themselves. Uh, iOS XC, the uh, system architecture software that, that these platforms are built on, same as the ASR 1000, uh, is an entirely Linux-based environment. And so within that Linux environment, we do have the capability of running virtual machines inside of it. We have support for both Linux virtual containers, LXC containers, and KVM or kernel virtual machines inside of the system. Uh, these are really designed to be virtual machines that replace some sort of a network appliance, some sort of an appliance already in the branch that provides some sort of an additional network functionality or uh, data functionality inside of the branch. Now, one stipulation that these containers do have to be signed by Cisco, digitally signed by Cisco, and that's really just there for security and stability of the platform. These are mission critical branch platforms. The entire branch relies on uh, the ISR being up and functional, and that's why we just want to verify and make sure that these applications, these virtual machines, are gonna be robust enough to run inside of the router itself. Uh, and that's why currently today you can you can get Cisco WAS and Cisco Julex Energy Management inside of a virtual machine. Those are Cisco applications. But we do certainly expect and, and we do have plans for additional third party and partner applications to run inside of this built-in hypervisor basically. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, those are supported across the board on all of the ISR 4000 platforms. Now, if you do need additional virtual machines, additional processing inside of an ISR 4000 or support for your common desktop or, or server applications, unsigned applications. We do offer the same bare metal servers that we have in the ISR G2s. That would be the UCSE series of modules that fit into all of your branch routers. Now the UCSE series is actually on its second generation now. Server technology moves a lot faster than your traditional network platform technology and, and of course we expect servers to be refreshed on a, on a much more frequent basis. Uh, because of that, we're on our second generation of UCSE series. Basically, whenever Intel comes out with a major uh, CPU enhancement to their server line of chips, we're going to be coming out with new UCSE series uh, blades. And we're on the, the M2, the second generation of these blades now. Uh, you get a variety of different performance options here, all the way from the single wide uh, service module UCSE 140, which gives you four cores of x86 CPUs with uh, two drives, either hard drives or SSDs there with up to 16 gigs of DRAM. Uh, moving up to the double wide, you get uh, three drive bays for either hard drives or SSDs and up to 48 gigs of RAM in either a six core or an eight core now available double wide CPU and these are bare metal servers so you can run absolutely any operating system or any hypervisor that you want onto these servers. One of the great things about introducing the 4451 uh, over a year before the rest of the family is that it gave us a long time to really come out with all of the IO modules, all of the physical interfaces that we needed in a branch platform. And that's certainly something that we've done uh, with the ISR 4000 family. So really even though Ethernet is becoming king in terms of WAN interface handoff, uh, in this day and age, we are still seeing a ton of T1 and E1 uh, analog voice and voice aggregation capabilities. And then, of course, even faster picking up is the new uh, 4G LTE uh, interface technology that is really exploding in terms of uh, secondary backup interfaces and even primary interfaces in, in some cases. So we do support uh, all of those interfaces, including DSL, T3, E3, T1, E1, uh, all of the typical voice, both digital and analog in the uh, ISR 4000, uh, as well as our Ethernet switching modules, both in the uh, the low density four and eight port counts if you just need a few ports of Ethernet switching, as well as the 16, 24, and 48 port modules uh, that are essentially catalyst Ethernet switches on a blade inside of your ISR. Uh, we support all of those across the board. And then of course, uh, for server replacement, the UCSE series, same as the ISR G2 uh, in the uh, ISR 4000. 
So that's the ISR4Ks in a nutshell, really quick introduction there. So these are a new line of ISR integrated services routers from Cisco. Again, just five platforms with 10 different performance levels to get you all the way from a 50 megabits per second entry level desktop form factor in the 4321. Uh, up through the family all the way to the um, 4451 um, 2RU, 2 gigabits per second platform at the high end of the portfolio. So two different performance, two different families there in the 4300 and the 4400 family. Honestly, the biggest difference there from an end user perspective is that we now have dual power supplies in the 4400 series and only a single power supply in the 4300 series. Um, but those five platforms really getting you across the, the board in terms of the uh, the flagship branch platforms from Cisco. One common, one common architecture uh, across the entire family. Mm -hmm.